Welcome to LT Gaming, my name is Tom and today we've got something pretty special to talk about. First off, a big shout out to Paradox Arc for sponsoring this video. We really appreciate you supporting the channel and letting us bring more content for you guys. While you're here, don't forget to drop us a like if you enjoyed the review, comment your thoughts and subscribe for more gaming content as we have a ton of stuff in the works. But let's dive into Tato Annie Aztec Cities. This game lets you build and manage your very own metropolis during the height of the Aztec civilization. We're talking humble beginnings, expanding your city, trading, managing resources, and ultimately trying to become the Tlato Ani, aka the Emperor. It's a city builder where you're shaping not just one city, but an entire empire. Something important to note is that Tlato Ani is releasing into early access, which means what you see now is just the beginning. There's going to be a ton of updates and improvements as the game evolves throughout this period and if you're diving in early expect the experience to keep on getting better. And a quick note, I'm probably butchering the pronunciation of Tato Annie so apologies in advance there. So what's the deal with this game and why should you care? If you're into classic city builders, games like Pharaoh from the 90s, you're going to feel right at home here. But instead of ancient Egypt, you're dropped right into Mesoamerica in the middle of Aztec history. The whole premise is that you start with a single city, grow it, conquer the wilderness around you and eventually become the powerful ruler over multiple city-states. And what really caught my attention with this one is the setting. It's super unique for a city builder. I mean, how often do you ever see a game focused on the Aztecs? And there's a really distinct vibe to it that sets it apart from the usual city builder fare and I was immediately intrigued. So let's jump in. So it feels like you're managing an actual living, breathing society. You're not just building structures. You're managing the day-to-day -day lives and it adds a nice layer of depth right off the bat. The first thing that hit me when I started playing was how peaceful and calming the whole vibe is. There's something so chill about it, especially when compared to other city builders. It has this nostalgia that took me back to those classic games like Pharaoh. And if you played any of those impressions games from the 90s, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But this one isn't stuck in the past, it builds on that foundation with more strategic layers and way more detail. If you're the type of person who loves diving into city builders, this game's going to be heaven for you. You've got dozens of resources to gather and manage, from food to gold, and you're constantly balancing your economy, services, military, festivals and even religion in the mix as well. And it's not just about the building side, there is strategy here. You get the sense that to be a great emperor you've First of all, got to be a great statesman and keep everyone around you happy, so there's a big diplomacy part of the game. What really got me hooked was how your citizens evolve over time. Like your farmers can become experts at their craft. Your soldiers can turn into battle-hardened veterans. This kind of character progression pulls you in because it feels like every action matters when you're building your settlement. And houses don't just upgrade instantly like they would in other games when conditions are met. They need a whole year of stable conditions first, which makes you plan and think ahead. So it's a nice departure from the old city builders where things upgraded the moment you checked off the requirements. Tlato Annie takes its time and forces you to be more patient and strategic. But it's not all smooth sailing. I did find myself at times feeling a bit aimless, especially when my resources weren't increasing and I couldn't figure out why. Turns out a lot of the time you just have to be patient and let this one unfold. Now combat, this is where I did feel a little bit of a letdown. It had some promise, but it felt clunky and buggy in my playthrough. It reminded me exactly how the battles worked in Pharaoh, the original one, which was fun for nostalgia's sake, but I'm hoping they patch this up because it could use some refinement. On the setting side of things, the game really nails the vibe of ancient Mesoamerica. The art style immediately drew me in. It's colorful and it feels like you're in the heart of an Aztec city. But I'll admit, when you zoom in, some of the character details are a little bit lacking. They could use a bit more fine tuning. The UI though, simple, clean, effective, everything you need without being overwhelming, so that's a win in my book. When we come on to the sound side of things, the soundtrack is absolutely spot on. The music in this game is tranquil, dreamlike, and the score perfectly matches the laid back pace of the game. It's relaxing and I cannot fold it. I do wish the sound effects were a bit more present and immersive though. I still remember the sound of a brewery pouring a beer in Faro. Those little things that stick with you and give the game some personality and Tlato Annie could benefit from a little bit more of that. 
But I want to highlight to you guys what really sets Tlato Annie apart from other city builders and strategy games out there. First off, the depth here is impressive. It takes a lot of those classic city building concepts we know and love, but cranks up the complexity. And I'm talking about everything, from the buildings you construct to how supply chains work. You're not just placing a farm and forgetting about it, you're managing how that farm fits into the bigger picture of your city's economy. One of the things I really enjoyed about the game was the way it creates the vibe of this city-state existence. Trade is integral to your progression. If you're not supplying tribute effectively, you fall behind pretty quickly. And that dynamic adds just the right amount of pressure to keep the challenge fresh. It's a constant balancing act, making sure your people are happy while also keeping the tribute flowing. And I love that aspect that it pushes you to think strategically about how you manage your resources. Now I'm going to be honest, sometimes it's hard to follow what makes everything tick. There were definitely moments where I was just scratching my head, trying to figure out why things weren't working the way I thought they would. A great example of this was I was trying to get my tribute system up and running. I couldn't quite wrap my head around it at first, but once it finally clicked, that satisfaction of watching everything run smoothly was so rewarding. And it's a feeling that hardcore city building fans will know well, but I can see how this might frustrate some newer players. You've got to be ready to troubleshoot and experiment a bit, and if you're someone who loves the nitty gritty of managing systems, you're going to feel right at home. If not, this game could test your patience. Speaking of systems, the historical accuracy in this game was also a big highlight. I'm not exactly a historian, but after playing this I kind of felt like I could throw on my plumera and start running my own Aztec city state. The campaign does a really good job of easing you into the time period, slowly introducing you to the politics, the culture and the way things worked back then. It's well written and it really sets the scene. And not just on the gameplay side, but the art style and music add so much to this sense of immersion. The architecture feels authentic and the soundscape just pulls you into the era. And you can tell the devs wanted to honour the history while also making it a fun game to play. But I think this is important to state, the game definitely has a learning curve. The tutorial is solid, don't get me wrong, but even with that you're probably going to have to go through things a couple of times before it all sinks in. It's not an easy game by any stretch, and it does feel a little overwhelming at times. Especially if you're not used to this level of micromanagement, let's say. So if you're new to the genre, just be prepared to rinse and repeat a few times before you really get into the groove. In the end, the complexity is the game's biggest strength and something that could also turn people off. If you like digging into the details and figuring out how all the systems work together, this is going to be your jam. If you prefer a more laid back, straightforward experience, you might feel a little bit lost at times. So let's break down what Tlato Annie gets right and where it maybe stumbles a bit. The pros and cons. Overall, this is a solid city builder, no doubt about it. It's approachable enough to get into, but once you start digging, there is a surprising amount of depth. The balance between being easy to pick up, but offering more complexity as you go is something I think a lot of people will appreciate. Plus, the unique time period and the Aztec setting give the game a fresh flavour you don't often see on the genre, and it really packs a punch in terms of atmosphere. The presentation is solid too, it looks great for the most part, though I do wish there were some more detailed animations that would really take it to the next level, you know, just a little bit more polish in how the characters move and interact, and this would make the game feel more alive. On the flip side, the game is not easy, and this is a pro and a con in a way. It's got quite a steep learning curve, and there were definitely moments where I was kind of fumbling around trying to figure out how to make things work, and it felt a bit trial and error until I finally got it right. And while the game shines in city management, the combat does feel a bit clunky and buggy at times. I really hope they iron that out in future updates, because it could use some optimization. Overall, I really enjoyed my time with Tlato Annie, and if you're into city builders, I think there is a lot to like here. It's not perfect, but no game is, but it's certainly got enough going for it that I definitely recommend giving it a shot and picking it up. Alright, so wrapping things up, how well does Tlato Annie deliver on its promises? Honestly, for me, it hits the mark. It does a great job pulling you into this unique, historically rich world, and if you're into city builders with a bit more depth and complexity, I think you'll find a lot to love here. Now, who's the game for? History buffs, strategy enthusiasts, or someone who appreciates a deeper, more intricate management game, it's absolutely going to be worth your time. It's also perfect if you're looking for a fresh setting in a very big genre. 
As for the final rating, I've put about 10 hours into it and I'm still hooked. So that's a buy from me. Definitely check this one out if you're up for a challenge.